It came without warning, a sudden Russian advance pulling out of the town of Gori. Travelling at steady speed, they were heading on the main road south towards the Georgian capital of Tbilisi. If this was an invasion, it was slow and lacked aggression. The convoy snaked back for almost a kilometre. It included armoured personnel carriers, supply trucks and big artillery guns. The Russians said they weren't in Gori. This is the proof they were. And now they're on the road towards Tbilisi. As word spread the Russians were coming, there was panic on the face of locals who piled into every available vehicle to take them away from the advance. On and on it pushed, kilometre after kilometre further into Georgian territory, challenging and provoking. From the capital Tbilisi, a convoy of Georgian Special Forces soldiers was sent. Suddenly, 15 kilometres from the Russians, they pulled to the side of the road and turned back to Tbilisi. The Russians came to a halt near Orjasani, 15 kilometres out of Gori. The vehicles turned off the main road south and set up camp in a field. We were told the commander was awaiting further instructions. The day in Gori started with rumours of an imminent Russian arrival. Lily Lomsadze had just returned home after the bombing which hammered Gori for days. But soon she'd picked up a few belongings in a carrier bag and with a worried look on her face was running away again. I just got back this morning, but I'm getting out. They told me the Russians are nearby and robbing people. Three tanks were in the town. I've got to go. Then came the mass evacuation as people saw the Russian tanks and trucks roll into town. Miriam Shulbachevili arrived on the edge of Gori. She had her vehicle stolen at gunpoint. Men with guns stopped us and ordered us out of the car. We offered them money, but they said they wanted the car. We were very frightened. We lost everything, our documents, money, everything. And more people came, telling the stories of horrors left behind. As the Russians prepared for their departure from the field, a group of clearly distressed women arrived near us with harrowing tales of what was going on in nearby villages. Kazakhs and Ossetians in uniform are coming into the village, putting sacks over the heads of our men and slitting their throats. They're taking everyone, men, women and children. They're dragging the attractive women away. There are stories of this kind of thing on both sides. Al Jazeera has no way of confirming them, but the women here were distressed and adamant atrocities were being committed. And then suddenly the Russians were on the move again, the long line of vehicles snaking from their positions, heading back to Gori and beyond. This was a clear show of strength from the Russians, a reminder who has the power and who doesn't. On the road back to Tbilisi, the Georgian army waited, taking up positions against an enemy now heading the other way. They'd been told the war was over. No one here believes that's true. Alan Fisher, Al Jazeera, on the Gori-Tbilisi road.